How's it going folks? Just around at mum and dad's place looking at their aquaponic system. Thought I'd give you a bit of an update uh, as to where I'm up to. Uh, this is the radial flow settler. It's not quite ready to go and I'll show you why in a tick. But I thought I'd just explain a few bits on it. Um, I've set up the stilling well. It's still not cut to the right um, depth for the settler, but I've stuck the little 316 stainless steel bolts through the top and they'll just stop it from um, falling down uh, further into the settler. They can also be taken out as well if need be. And as a cap, all I'm going to do is um, the same sort of cap as goes over the top of the um, bell siphon. This is actually the one off there, bell siphon. Just sits over the top like that and away you go. Stops any debris falling in there. Now in the filter itself, I ran into a bit of a problem the other day. So just down in the base of the radial flow filter, you might be able to make out that crack. That crack happened because I was impatient. Um, I was around here the other day and it was about to start to rain and I wanted to adjust that pipe and I hit it with a rubber mallet and it was just too much force and it broke the plastic on the thin base of the drum there. This drum is a HDPE2 plastic so that can be welded shut. Dad offered to jerry-rig something for me with a soldering iron to do it but I figured because this is mum and dad's system and I won't be here to monitor it all the time I would prefer it to be a nice properly sealed base so I'm going to take this home put it in storage until I get my own welder and um, yeah we'll um, use a, a brand new settler here. I just got to wait till payday before I can afford to do that. Uh, another option would be to use a bulkhead fitting in a situation like this. I'm not going to really worry about it here um, because there's not a lot of movement around that pipe. Um, I do drain out and clean the radial flow settler at our place and that reuni seal gets a lot of movement, a lot of wear and tear and I have had one fail there. But in a situation like this, you know, um, yeah, it should be fine and dandy. There's no movement in the pipe whatsoever. Uh, you could put in one of these bulkhead fittings, but one of the problems you get with the bulkhead fittings is you also need to buy the corresponding threaded adapters, which can be expensive depending on what sort of a budget you're working on. Um, can blow out the budget a bit, but um, yeah, it is another option. There's two more things that need to be added to this if I was going to keep this drum, and that's a bleed off valve, probably about there in height to take the majority of the clean water out of the settler and deposit it back into the sump next to it when it comes to clean out time and the other fitting would be just a little um, port down the bottom here that with a valve on it where you can just drain out any of the solids that accumulate down the base so I didn't bother putting them in um, mainly because you know this drum's being retired for a while so yeah a little bit of a uh, word of warning uh, don't force pipes through uni seals in thin plastic uh, the plastic's not too forgiving so just down here under the radial flow filter, things have changed a bit. Dad screwed in some um, fly screen tracks that he's recycled, uh, just from old fly screen doors, into the side of the cage. Uh, you may remember from last time, the settler was sitting here, which was far too high, and it needed to come up just a little bit further than this rail here. So Dad's dodged up this. Uh, actually, I shouldn't say dodgy, it's on there very solidly. These rails here aren't the permanent ones. We will be putting better ones on. I've just popped them there for the time being, just so I can work out the plumbing and whatnot. Just by the way, if you're observant folks, all this algae here is coming from the nutrient rich water that is just there. Um, it's coming off a bleed off line from the pump and it's splashing on the surface of the water in the sump tank. And because it's nutrient rich, um, it hits the side here, stays, the sunlight hits it and creates algae. Um, all that hopefully will end when that valve gets taken out of the system when we replumb it. Not only that, the whole system will be cluttered from the sunlight um, in the near future once we work out how everything else is going. Down underneath, you can see the um, uni seal up in there, and I've got all glued or screwed fittings, 25 mil or one inch pipe coming down to a double 45 that is connected to a, um, uh, keep forgetting the name of these guys, barrel union, that's right Robert, a barrel union, a 25 mil barrel union into a 25 mil valve with a handle. I love these ones, these sanking valves. The handles come off so no one can muck around with them because there will be grandkids involved with the system. Uh, the water you can see leaking down here too is probably coming from the crack in there. Um, so that's pretty much all the plumbing through a uni seal into the base of the aquaponics fish tank. And the drain work in there hasn't changed since um, we last visited it. Um, and we've got a, just a flexible coupling there just so it doesn't put any stress on the um, uni seal in the side wall of the tank there. So that's pretty much all it for the radial flow settler. I'll uh, take you around and explain the um, pipe work on the pump. So just around here, what will be the sump tank, I've just turned the pump off by the way, uh, we have a pump. This one here uh, obviously isn't connected yet. It's a 6500 litre an hour J-bow pump 
And what I've done is I've added on a, an inch and a quarter or 32 mil PVC pipe that will be delivering the water through to the fish tank. Now normally what I'd do is I'd connect a 25 mil reinforced hose fitting onto there because there's adapters that come with the pump and use that to move the water around the system. Now the main reason I went with the 32 mil pipe is because that's the size diameter fitting that is on the pump. So if that's what's on the pump, that's what it's designed to pump through that size pipe. And I have a feeling that um, it will flow a lot smoother through a 32 mil than if I knocked it down to a 25 mil or a one inch. So um, that's the main reason. Uh, I will here at some point uh, be teeing off that way to the grow beds. Um, but yeah, this this little all this here will be explained in another video. Uh, just show you some of these pipes and fittings over here. So just over here at a selection of pipes and hoses and fittings, I just wanted to run through um, why I've chosen what I have. I will put the measurements up in both metric and imperial for you folks over in the States. Uh, so over here we have a one inch or 25 mil pipe and hose. Internal diameter of this one here is 29 millimeters. The internal diameter of the 25 mil hose is only 24 millimeters. So just shy of uh, one inch or 25 mil. Now, Obviously, we're also going to have some sort of um, friction loss as well due to those little lumps in there. Those little lumps will not only collect solids, but bioslime as well, um, just retarding the flow through the pipe itself. Now, next to it, we have a 25 mil or one inch fitting, barbed fitting, and that will be another choke point for the flow of the water. It's got an internal diameter of 21 millimeters. Now, the PVC pipe fittings, uh, they pretty much were made to take the outside diameter of these pipes. So while bending and turning the water does create a little bit of friction loss, um, it would be nowhere near as much as um, reducing the actual diameter of the uh, pipe itself. And just on the end here for comparison, I have a 20 millimeter or three quarter inch uh, pipe PVC fitting. And this one here has an internal diameter of 22.5 millimeters, which is also larger than the fitting here for the one inch reinforced hose. Up the back here, we have the 32 mil or inch and a quarter pipe and hose and barbed fitting. Now the internal diameter on the inch and a quarter pipe is 36 millimeters. Uh, it's actually 32 mil or an inch and a quarter um, uh, for the hose itself, but the is further reduced down with the fitting down to 28 millimeters. So, um, and again, yeah, this one here has considerable ridging on the inside, which over time would reduce the flow of the water. So there's a bit of an explanation and you know because it's uh, only a 6500 liter an hour pump and there will be a bit of a head height involved and pipe friction and whatnot uh, that's why I've opted for the larger diameter pipe because I do want to get as much flow rate out of that little jobby as I can and make it cheaper to run for mum and dad than a larger pump like you know the one I run at home. And as I did mention before this system will be cladded eventually uh, the outside here will be cladded with timber and also the top of the grow beds. The sump will pretty much will be shaded except for this side, but it'll get some sort of a treatment down there as well. And I'm also thinking about painting the, um, the filter or the settler, uh, just so it blends in a little bit because it will be out by itself. Although I could make a little square timber box around it. And the pipe well as well, the pipe work, sorry, as well, will get a bit of a treatment just so it all blends in nicely. And yes, we haven't really done anything else with the other grow beds as such. Um, as for how it's going in here, not too bad. I do think it's got a bit of an iron deficiency at the moment, but I've got no test kit. So uh, once I get a test kit again, I'll um, just double check. But for the time being, I'm going to bring around some chelated iron and just pop it in. Um, the, the main reason is I don't think I'm going to be able to overdose with iron. Um, so I'll just pop a little bit in until I get a test kit to test. Uh, the um, longevity spinach, Dad's taken a whole heap out and struck some in containers. Uh, for, I think he's giving it away to people at church and they've taken off a few of the, um, the greens, the onion greens and bits and pieces like that. So all I pretty much will need to do now is just replace that radial flow settler and fix up some plumbing that runs into the fish tank, which I'll run through in another clip. And this thing will be pretty much all right to pop some fish in. Uh, I'm not sure whether we'll be doing it straight away though, because we are coming into winter and I have read that we are supposed to have a uh, few rather cold snaps this season. So what I might concentrate on doing is just finishing it off totally, make a couple of clips showing you folks uh, different ways you can plumb up the grow beds and whatnot. And then when things start to warm up towards the end of winter, uh, we'll see if there's any fish around. Um, Mum and dad want jade perch and we'll look at getting some for the system then. 
So before I do hook on the new grow beds, I need to clean out the one that's there already. Um, so I'll give that bit of media a wash and I'll show you folks an easy way to do it in an upcoming clip. And then also how we plumb on the other um, grow beds and yeah, how the water circulates and that sort of thing. So that will be coming after we finish renovating the house. Uh, for you folks who want a quick house renovation update, I'm off there tomorrow to do some painting with a mate. G'day Mark and thank you mate and Alison and, um, and Bianca, she'll be helping too. Uh, so we're doing some work there um, and there'll be a renovation clip coming through the week or next weekend and more aquaponic clips coming down the line. Uh, if you would like to um, catch the aquaponic clips that are already posted to the channel, you can click on those little uh, buttons that are appearing at the end screen here and they'll take you to a couple of playlists. So I will pretty much all leave it there. I do hope you've enjoyed the clip and your own gardens and aquaponics are booming. And I'll catch you later. Cheers, folks. Have a top one.